As we look back at so many wonderful memories that happened on the grounds of Spruce Meadows, it is also a time for us to look forward. Um, this too will pass the COVID virus, and we really are excited about welcoming you next year in 2021 to the grounds of Spruce Meadows, whether you're one of our sponsors, our athletes, our fans, the media. And I know that um, we are all sad that we're not together, but I do believe that we can do um, put together the best ever national tournament in 2021. Um, I look at it as Groundhog Day. Next year, we're gonna be celebrating our 45th year of jumping, and we look forward to welcoming you back here at Spruce Meadows. Welcome back to the Sunday afternoon of the 2020 Spruce Meadows National at Home Edition. I'm Ian Allison coming to you from an eerily quiet international ring where normally tens of thousands of fans would be on hand to celebrate the world's best in international show jumping. June normally marks the start of our season of international sport here at Spruce Meadows. It also marks the start of a season where we typically pay closer attention to the first responders. Of course, through COVID-19, first responders have been going at full throttle for more than three months now, and each and every day, we have a growing respect for the men and women around the world who are helping us get through this crisis. And here in Alberta, you know, June also brings with it uh, fire season and flood season. In 2013, the city of Calgary uh, experienced a horrific flood through torrential rains and a heavy snowpack that took out uh, much of the downtown part of the city. And then just uh, in 2017 with the horrific fires that set themselves in on Fort McMurray. And again, recently this spring, Fort McMurray in the northern part of the province was uh, overcome by the floodwaters of the Athabasca River. It's why we have such a deep and passionate respect for the Calgary and Alberta area first responders. It comes from striving, maintaining the highest 
safety standards, looking after the smallest detail and going the extra mile. Excellence means caring, it means making a special effort to do more. And thank you so much to all of our first responders each day that you do more and care of our community. We have the Salute to First Responders, which showcases uh, a lot of the activities that your emergency services in the region uh, deliver. And uh, we're fortunate enough to have the FireFit event supported by Spruce Meadows. Some of the most demanding tasks that firefighters go through uh, day to day uh, showcased in what's known as the toughest two minutes in sports. It's in five stages, this course. Firefighters are wearing their full, full turnout gear, so when they put that on, it's anywhere from 25 to 35 pounds of uh, weight that just goes on them uh, right off the bat. First task they're asked to do is uh, they put a hose pack on their shoulders and they run up uh, 66 uh, stairs to get to the top. They lean over the top of the railing and they pull up 40 pounds, simulating that they'd be pulling up a hose pack. They get back down the stairs safely. Uh, they have to hit every step on the way down. Um, and then they get to uh, what's called a Kaiser machine that uh, simulates chopping a hole in a floor. Once they complete that, uh, they serpentine through, uh, through pylons and they pick up a charged hose line. And about two thirds of the way that hose line turns into about 300 pounds. And they've got to cross the line, which brings them to the final uh, stage, which is the dummy drag. They'll pick up a dummy that weighs 170 pounds and they'll drag it 100 feet backwards uh, to get to the finish line. So all of this is while breathing on uh, their compressed uh, air um, and under the, the weight of uh, 25 to 35 pounds. If you get under two minutes, you're, you're doing quite well. Uh, some of our competitors uh, can get under that minute 30, um, which is an incredible speed and takes some incredible athleticism. These are everyday uh, men and women that are out there uh, doing their best for uh, the citizens of Calgary and in the region. It's one of those sports where uh, there's camaraderie between, uh, you know, everybody, it's a competition between each other, but um, at the end of the day, uh, they're all firefighters and, and they, all, they all value and, and truly want to do the same thing, which is to help people. And uh, so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of great team atmosphere. And uh, when you're in the competition and you, you start competing for years, you get to know uh, everybody and, uh, and you see them uh, day in, day out. And this has been a, a great event, a great venue uh, for um, you know, not just the region, but for competitors that have come uh, quite a distance. So we're really lucky to, to have and looking forward to, to seeing those people again. Corporate partnerships here at Spruce Meadows go far beyond the sporting arena. A great case in point, of course, is ATCO, who has a long-standing relationship with first responders, not only here in Alberta, but around the world. In the arena of sport, of course, ATCO has been involved with Spruce Meadows for each of the 45 years that Spruce Meadows has been around. And in 2017, was very supportive of a new concept, the Speed Series here at Spruce Meadows, where over the course of the summer series, the same identical course in two different arenas would be jumped and there'd be a cumulative award to see who was the overall speed champion. It was the Canada 150 celebration in 2017, the first year the Speed Series was introduced. And of course, two of the top speed riders in the world were heavy favorites going in. BZ Madden of the United States and McLean Ward, also of the United States. But there was also a new kid in town, and he came from Ireland. His name was Daniel Coyle. Welcome to the 1976 Bruce Meadows Masters. And this afternoon, we'll be featuring highlights of the...
Season 42 of International Sport from Spruce Meadows has attracted the very best horses and riders in the world to this season opener. The Spruce Meadows National Tournament presented by Rolex. Today the International Ring has attracted an incredible entry of established and rising stars for the ATCO Classic. Hello and welcome to Spruce Meadows. I'm Ian Allison, here to bring you the action of the ATCO Classic, part of the Canada 150 Speed Series. The Speed Series introduced this year will be jumped over identical courses on four occasions in two different stadiums here at Spruce Meadows through the course of the season. And what an entry we have attracted today to compete over this 630 metre track. A track that will be highlighted by many Canadian themed obstacles, including the Canada 150 planks, the Maple Leafs, the hockey sticks, and the CPR train trestle. This is a series about speed where four seconds are added for every rail lowered and it has attracted the very best speed riders in the world, including the likes of Canadian Olympic champion Eric Lamaz, BZ Madden, McLean Ward, and then there's the young Irishman, Daniel Coyle, who has shown over the last couple of seasons he is a force to be reckoned with on any occasion here at Spruce Meadows. Don't count out veteran Leslie Howard of the United States. She and her grey mare Donna Speciel have really risen to the occasion here at Spruce Meadows this season and they will be tough to beat today in the international ring. We will have all of the action from the ATCO Classic at the Spruce Meadows National when we return. The ATCO Classic, first of the Canada 150 Speed Series, debuting today in the International Ring, a 630 meter track that many of these horses and riders will jump four times this season at Spruce Meadows. This course features a very much Canadian theme and course designer Leopoldo Palacios has asked horses and riders many questions. Speed, courage, their ability to lengthen and shorten stride, and this young man, Daniel Coyle of Ireland, 22 years of age, has shown early that he will be one to be reckoned with in the international ring at Spruce Meadows. Simba de la Rock, the beautiful chestnut with the white blaze, carried him around this 630 meter track with a clear round in a time of 70.62 seconds to take the early lead in the ATCO Classic at Spruce Meadows. Absolutely spectacular conditions, an international entry that has attracted riders from 15 nations here to take on the international ring today. And there you see Daniel Coyle under beautiful Alberta sunshine. Will he be able to hold off the likes of World Cup champion McLean Ward, three-time Olympic medalist Eric Lamaze? Look at the depth of this field. Rich Feller is one of the great speed riders of all time, still to come from the United States. And then you see BZ Madden, Richard Spooner, affectionately known as the master of faster, and a real flavor of the red, white, and blue who have come north to take on the international ring at Spruce Meadows this summer. 630 meters, 15 jumping efforts. No time allowed, but the time limit is 120 seconds. In the event of an obstacle lowered, four seconds added to your time. So in essence, you could win this with a rail down. Tina La Boheme, first out of the blocks here in our coverage with McLean Ward, one of the all-time greats, owner of a pair of Olympic team gold medals and a silver medal scored last summer in Rio. That in combination with his World Cup title earned in Omaha, Nebraska earlier this year has put this man at or near the summit of the sport. Coming into the Spruce Meadows Summer Series, ranked number three in the world and looking to move up the ladder still. He's on the mark here with a quick trip out of the block so far. As you can see, the Canadian-themed jumps, including that 150 logo as Canada celebrates its 150th anniversary in 2017. McLean Ward with a very open approach to the Athens coins. Obstacle he became familiar with en route to his first Olympic gold medal at the Athens Games. And there you see a new leader here at Spruce Meadows as Tina Laboem goes to the top of the standings by the narrowest of margins, one one hundredth of a second. 
Here's a look at her form through the combination on the east side of the international ring and then really opening up as they move across the finish line, check the scoreboard. And by the slimmest of margins, the red, white, and blue of the United States goes to the top of the standings. top six on three occasions in Rome just last weekend. Thalias Dilalok, Eric Lamaz, Canada. There's a look at Canada's three-time Olympic medalist, Eric Lamaz, individual gold at the Beijing Games. To go with the team silver and then last summer in Rio. With the mere fine lady almost scored the individual bronze. He is underway now. Winner of nearly five million dollars in the international ring at Spruce Meadows in his illustrious career. But problems early for the great Olympian Eric Lamaz aboard Talas de la Roque. Now the clock just keeps running. That's the first disobedience. He certainly is out of the running now, but Lamaz will want to continue underway here in the international ring at Spruce Meadows. Disappointment early for the Canadian veteran who's really been trying to find his form in the international ring to continue his great career. And the 10-year-old mayor, he's a bond today. Problems early, so he's just going to put her through the paces. This is valuable experience. There you see an interesting option on course. They'll be encountering all summer long here at Spruce Meadows. Obstacle number six, you can either jump the hockey sticks or the CPR train trestle. Both of those obstacles, newer additions to the Spruce Meadows Championship collection from the 2015 Pan American Games in Toronto. This, of course, the newest edition this year, the new Canada 150 planks. Lamaz now sets the big mare up for the 10 AB vertical oxer combination. And heads towards the final line. So a bit of a learning exercise today for Eric Lamaz, not something he's used to in the international ring here at Spruce Meadows. He finishes up approaching the time limit of 120 seconds. But of course, time is of the essence in the ATCO Classic. So McLean Ward continues to lead at 70.61. Here's a look as the 10-year-old mare starts off in the competition today. And then Lamaze having a bit of trouble turning her back early on in the course and she just was not willing to go forward towards the next obstacle on course and as such valuable time eaten up before he could get to fence number three. And it was over early for the great Canadian veteran. Pedro Venice, one of the rising stars of this sport. First time to the Spruce Meadows Summer Series, having reached the medal podium already in his career at the Spruce Meadows Masters in both Nations Cup and in the CP International, part of the Rolex Grand Slam of show jumping. Then, of course, in December 2016, with his great stallion, Quabri, jump to victory in the Rolex Grand Prix of Geneva. So looking forward to huge things this year from the charismatic Brazilian who's underway aboard Trestle. Pedro Venise lives in Belgium where he bases his operation out of, but he has Brought a string of six horses to Spruce Meadows for the 2017 Summer Series for the entire five-week tour and is enjoying good success early. Looking to keep it going now with Tresor. A solid trip around this course for Pedro Venice. So a clear performance, not quite up to the pace set by McLean Ward, but nonetheless, Tresor and Pedro Venice scoot around this 630 meter track and have become players to get in perhaps on 
part of the top prize money here today at Spruce Meadows. In case you missed us talking about this earlier, although this is a fantastic standalone competition, it also forms part of the Canada 150 Speed Challenge Award. And we're going to see an identical track. The track you see in front of us will also feature... The so the waiting game will commence now for Venice as we move down the start list to Cameron Hanley. Great Irish veteran. Great to see him back at Spruce Meadows. Stephen Lockwood, the president and chief operating officer of Atco Structures and Logistics, takes the Cavaliers' salute from the Irish veteran. Baltazar is the big bay horse he's come into the stadium with. Cameron, a super study of passion and resilience in this sport, coming back from really a horrific knee injury that required more than 10 surgeries to correct due to a number of post-operative setbacks three or four years ago but a ferocious horseman a ferocious competitor and he is underway now this is Cameron Hanley The enormity of the international ring gets these horses really starting to open up. Many of them used to competing on the indoor circuit, the European circuit, and when they get into the international ring at Spruce Meadows, which has a footprint about the size of four rugby fields, it really is a chance for them to open up their gallop strides and jump these big international fences, and that's exactly what Cameron Hanley is underway with right now. Balthazar is an 11-year-old Dutch warm blood. As you can see he's well off the pace early with this big gelding, big ground covering stride, but not really going to the accelerator all that much as still getting this horse used to the international ring at Spruce Meadows. A big stretch down this final line. Now starting to open up the stride. Little, too little, too late for Cameron Hanley as he finishes up in 79.09. But he'll be happy with that clear performance as he begins to find his stride at Spruce Meadows in 2017. Here's a look at the in and out on the east side of the stadium. Obstacle 7AB, nicely handled. Of course, just a little bit too collected in the back end there, scooting around a little bit, but should open up as the tour continues here at Spruce Meadows. Karen Hill has been competing here for probably about four or five years now in the international ring, and she's just starting to really build up an incredible string. She's been competing the one horse for the last few years in the international division. Cameron Hanley heads out to catch his breath, and young Karen Poli of Japan next to go on course. Karen's sights are set on Tokyo to represent her native land at the next Summer Olympics. Little Lord is the name of the horse. Karen, who lives just about full-time now in the United States, but is currently training with Canada's Ian Miller as she tries to pursue her Olympic dreams one step at a time. Winner of a number of four-star Grand Prix as the 25-year-old continues to make her way up the world rankings. Underway now with Little Lord. Little Lord is a 12-year-old Holsteiner gelding. Really nifty little model of a sport horse. Has a quick step. Good energy. Seems to have some blood. Not very good with the back end there as she headed through the birdhouse combination. Natural obstacle adjacent to the Spruce Meadows road jump. This aspiring Olympian will get a taste of some of the Olympic jump collection also incorporated into the course here at Spruce Meadows by Leopoldo Palacios. She's already successfully gotten over the Beijing wall and now she jumps the Sydney Lanterns. It's 
Sitting on four seconds in penalties. That will be added to her final time as she gets across the Athens coins and down the final line. Pretty good running time for the youngster from Japan. 73-44 plus four for a total of 77-44. Karen Pole and Little Lord. Here's a look at just jumping into the shadows there, not getting the back end high enough to get over that unimpressive brown vertical. This girl, this girl loves going fast. She had an incredible win with this horse in Langley 10 days ago. It's a 10 year old by ace, heartbreaker on the damn side. Ashley Bond delivers the Cavalier salute. Great to see Ashley Bond back at Spruce Meadows after a couple of years hiatus. And for the last four months of that, she's been getting to know her new baby daughter, who she delivered in the early part of 2017. Not much of a maternity leave for this ferocious competitor from California. Ashley Bond, underway with Ace of Hearts. This 10-year-old gelding getting cranked back, the turn back, hard left from the Atco signature fence to the Canada 150 vertical. You'll probably start to hear Ashley chase a bit. She's quite vocal sometimes out there. That was efficiently ridden as she heads to the 7AB Oxer vertical combination just coming out of the shadows on the east side of the stadium. Perhaps a little choppy here in her round. She's not really going as forward as one might expect. Let's see if she opens it up here. Well encouraged down the final line. Ashley Bond has a running time of 71.56, so she was right on the mark to challenge the top of the standings, but has that last rail down, and that will equate to a bit of a precipitous fall down the standings. There she is driving hard to the last fence, but it's a fine balance if you catch too much speed. You can often pull a rail as the horses flatten out. And that was the case there for Ace of Hearts. come back to Canada, and this man's represented his country at Nations Cup level. He's been competing over in Europe. This is a horse he brought out internationally for the first time last year. And uh, really just a youngster, it's just an eight-year-old. From Ashley Bond in the on-deck area to the international ben ring where young Ben Aslan is getting ready to carry the Canadian colors around this 630 meter course. Ben Aslan is aboard clockwise, just an eight year old. So very much a green horse in this environment at Spruce Meadows, not only with the sea of color and massive obstacles, crowd continuing to build early here at the Spruce Meadows National. He is underway, Ben Aslan himself. 23 years of age, has represented Canada on the international stage and contributed to many significant results, including Team Canada's silver medal at the Nations Cup final in Barcelona a couple of years back. Rail there at 7A, not quite able to cover the Oxer. The eight year old gelding looks very attentive on the job here. Will not be a player today, but the youngsters have looked very comfortable out in the international ring. Seconds, Clockwise debuting in the FEI divisions with Ben Aslan in 2017. They finish up.
in the Atco Classic. McLean Ward of the United States leads the way at Spruce Meadows, the time to beat 70.61. Still to come, many of the fastest in the world. Can anyone catch the reigning World Cup champion here at the International Ring at Spruce Meadows? We'll find out when we return. Welcome back to the International Ring at Spruce Meadows. Glorious conditions for the ATCO Classic. World Cup champion McLean Ward leads the way still to come. Many of the fastest horse rider combinations in the world. Can they catch Ward and Tina Laboem who lead the way in 70.61 seconds. Look at that, Ward still to come with his second mount, Double H Carlos. BZ Madden with her newest international mount who has been very impressive here in his first season at Spruce Meadows. Rich Fellers into the stadium. Man from Wilsonville, Oregon, who has made the trek north since he was a teenager. His resume includes an Olympic appearance with the Great Flexible, a World Cup title with the Great Flexible, but winner of just about every event in the international ring through his illustrious career. His unique style, one of the real good guys, one of the hardest working men in the sport. Rich Fellers, crazy for crown. since the retirement of Flexible in 2016. Rich has been looking for that next star and he's hoping with Crazy for Crown, he's got a useful horse on his roster, one that can get to know the going in the international ring here at Spruce Meadows under the guidance of one of the great veterans in the sport. Right now, not carrying the pace that one would expect with some of the former mounts, but crazy for Crown to just starting to get to know the international ring, its huge expanse, the 11-year-old stallion. There you see he's more than two seconds off the pace right now. Very tough to make that up. And down come the planks for four seconds in penalties. <laughs> to the final fence, Rich Fellers. Ah. So not a bad running time actually, but the eight seconds and penalties do not help the cause. But he'll be content with the way the stallion confidently made its way around the course. However, the Canada planks proved a little problematic. Here you see, coming off at number two, the great turn back to this red and white Canada 150 Oxer. Signature Rich Feller's efficiency. But down the final line, just bringing down what are affectionately known as the Mafia rails, pinstriped red and white rails here at Spruce Meadows, the second of his lowered obstacles on course. And love this combination, in fact. They've kept us on the edge of our seats all week, and they rode to victory in the Bantrell Cup back on... Daniel Coyle. What held the lead for the early part of this competition that was seized from him by McLean Ward. Daniel returns with his second mount of the competition now. This is Sita, an 11 year old mare. Daniel Coyle comes in to see if he can get back to the top of the standings. This is an aggressive young rider whose horses really like to deliver for him. And today that horse is the 11 year old mare Sita former mount, as all of Daniel Coyle's horses are, of Connor Swale, who moved on for other opportunities from the Lothlorien farm at the end of last year. And this young man who was apprenticing there got the keys, and he's taken 
and seized that opportunity. Superb results as he's made his way up the world rankings. Great young talent with a great string of horses. Pops off the hockey stick vertical and now to the 7AB. Have to be very careful as the shadows are a bit tricky on the east side of the stadium right now. Balancing up. Ooh, that's a great useful maneuver by Sita. She wasn't quite sure what to do with that vertical. Popped up over it nicely. We've got a player here as Coyle opens up the gallop. He's going to have to really press here if he's going to catch Ward. Is it going to get done? 70.095. So three tenths off the pace nonetheless. Daniel Coyle now sits in second and third here at Spruce Meadows. Look at him cut inside there. Not much opportunity for him to get up and over and a great useful example of athleticism and carefulness there for Sita. So McLean Ward avoids the advances of the 22-year-old Daniel Coyle who sits in second and third. And right now the top three placings are separated by less than four tenths of a second. There you have a look at the great day the young Irishman's having as well as the veteran American star as we move on later into the order of go here. Chris Serby, one of the newest members of Team Canada having qualified for the World Cup final. Been campaigning on the European tour with strong results in both Geneva and at the Dutch Masters in Sertogenbosch. Winner of the Atco Six Bar at the Spruce Meadows Masters a year ago and the Summer Derby at Spruce Meadows. With Cavarola, Chris Serby is next to go on course. This is a 10 year old mare. A quick stepping mare. Chris is very confident in her ability. He's going to have to really push it today to get her to challenge the likes of McLean Ward and Daniel Coyle, who sit up at the top of the leaderboard, both with sub 71 second trips. Ooh, and a bit of a slip there. See if he can get her focused for this vertical and then heading towards these pair of brown birdhouses. So with that down in the slip, they will not be in the running today to challenge McLean Ward. taking the wider berth there to get towards the Canada 150 planks and now into the maple leaf combination. Down it comes as well for another four seconds to be added. So a running time of just over 80 seconds plus the eight in Penalties added for a total of 88.67. Serby finishes up. Here's the early problems at the birdhouses. Just coming out, catches it with the back legs. Great shot there from up in the poplars. McLean Ward continues to hold off all comers for the United States, but looking to change that will be Richard Spooner. This is Zutova. This is a 13-year-old Dutch warm blood gelding with Richard Spooner in for the ride. Richard Spooner, of course, loves to go fast. And that is what it will take today 
if one is to have any hopes of overtaking McLean Ward. Communication there by the Rolex clocks, but they seem to have sorted it out as they execute this turn back. Oh, and a second slip there. And that costs not only time, but also forward momentum, which can be problematic setting up for that oxer. Strided horse now being asked to open up that stride for Spooner. Let's see if he takes the inside here. He does not. He goes around the oxer. Coming down the final line, can he get there? Opens up a cracking effort by Richard Spooner, but not quite quick enough around this course as Richard Spooner gives it a go. 72-99 he finishes up with. It'll put him into fourth position currently. Early on, executing the turn here off the ATCO signature units and just Perhaps not having enough cork in the back end there. The cleats of the shoes tore up the turf. And then a big effort over this final line to finish up Richard Spooner. Spooner departs the stadium. As always, rewarding his horses with a signature cookie on the way out of the ring. There you go. Good job, big guy. Double H Carlos underway. McLean Ward currently leads. He'd love to be first and second in this competition. He is all about results and precision. McLean Ward underway right now. Keeps the horse's rear end underneath him. No slippage there as they head down the line to the first of the combinations on course. Double H Carlos, so attentive, so in sync with McLean Ward, setting up for the Beijing Abacus, and now the turn back to the option. Looks as though they'll take the train trestle. Yes, they do. Oh, a rail down. That combination on the east side of the stadium, 7AB, the auxer you have to pay respect to. It's in the shadows. It can be a little confusing for the horses. He takes the inside line. Nicely done there to the planks. Cutting the corner here to the Maple Leaf combination. He's on a good running time, but he's carrying four seconds in penalties, so. One and two likely out of the cards. Look at this running time, though. 68.06 for McLean Ward. Full two seconds faster than his current leading time. However, that time came without penalty. There you see. The only blemish on the scorecard, four seconds added at 7A, and this big stretch over the final obstacle on course. So McLean Ward sits on the leaderboard right now in first and fourth with Daniel Coyle sandwiched in at second and third. So really a showdown between the United States and Ireland here on the turf of Western Canada. American great BZ Madden delivers the Cavaliers salute. No stranger to victory here at Spruce Meadows. In 2008, in fact, she provided us all with a memorable Spruce Meadows moment in time. In 2008, the stage was set on the international ring for the ATCO Double Slalom, a bracket racing format competition with 32 horse rider combinations starting the event. 
then there's the round of 16, the round of eight, the round of four, and then the final. BZ Madden made it all the way through four rounds of competition before facing off with American Brianne Goutal on her flashy little pinto, Mont Gamon. Madden riding the 17-year-old Dutch warm blood stallion Conquest, affectionately known as Stumpy, answered the challenges of the course again, including an early stumble. When Guttall had a rail, Madden knew it was hers for the taking. Luckily, he's a very level-headed horse, real careful. And uh, I had a few rounds where I got ahead in the beginning and I was able to take it easy a little bit at the end, and I think that helped him stay together for the whole thing. Ladies and gentlemen, your champion of the ATCO structures, double slalom, BZ Madden of the United States. Well, it's not the reliable 17-year-old under Madden today. Indeed, it is a new mount for her, the 8-year-old Contagio. What an impressive dapple gray this has been as a new addition to the BZ Madden stable, one of the great horses owned by Abigail Wexner, who of course owns all of the horses that BZ rides internationally. And this horse has progressed rapidly since finding its new ride. Of course, one of the best riders of all time, BZ Madden, in my books. World Cup winner, three-time Olympic medalist, winner of virtually every event here at Spruce Meadows through her illustrious career that started in the mid-1980s here. And right now she has a prompt round going. She's always so efficient. Just about a second off the pace right now, oh, and that's a heartbreaker. As she incurs four seconds in penalties, the young Gray not quite able to handle the trick of that combination. So unassuming in the pace and efficiency she brings to every course. this time. Easy Madden certainly was on the mark. But the four seconds in penalties will not help the cause for BZ Madden today. Moves on to the leaderboard, but not a threat to our leader, McLean Ward. Here's a look at the only blemish on the scorecard today. Just cutting down a little bit, coming out of the combination, front feet not quite able to get up quickly enough, and down comes the red, white, and blue on the east side of the stadium. The future is bright for yet another mount of BZ Madden's. Leslie Howard, last to go, last one that can change things up on our current leaderboard, another American female legend in this sport. She in fact won an Olympic gold medal at the 1984 Olympics in Los Angeles. Also included on her resume, of course, a World Cup title. The CP International here at Spruce Meadows. All of the derbies, and today she's coming in with Donna Special, a horse that she and her husband, Peter Howard, are so high on. A nine-year-old mare. There's a look at our leader watching on McLean Ward from the clock tower at the south end of the stadium here. He knows that the great veteran is always a threat. And she is underway now with Donna Special. Leslie Howard. Big strided mare. Leslie's got her laser vision on. Coming in strong, starting the turn right away. Leaning into it, you can see Donna Special tugging a bit, Leslie balancing her up. Now she heads towards the option, going to the hockey sticks and pushing on now to the 7AB. She cannot afford a rail. It's a big mare, big ground covering stride. Will she cut inside here? No, she takes the wide berth to set up for the planks.
And now the final line, galloping towards the penultimate fence. The Athens coins, nicely done. Can she get done in less than four seconds? Oh, she's pulling. That cost time, she added stride. She will not get it done today. 72 seconds flat, a terrific effort, but not enough to overtake that man. McLean Ward of the United States, who jumps to victory yet again at Spruce Meadows to continue his phenomenal career and phenomenal year. McLean Ward, very much at the top of his game. What an afternoon of sport at Spruce Meadows, this youngster, Daniel Coyle. A name for the future, finishing up second and third with Simba de la Rock and his impressive mare Sita. Held the early lead here at Spruce Meadows until McLean Ward came in and bested him by one one hundredth of a second with Tina La Boheme. Efficiency, speed, and calculated risk, all part of the precision round posted by McLean Ward and Tina La Boheme. So McLean Ward goes through a bit of a waiting game. No one can catch him. There you see the final results. What an afternoon for McLean Ward, Daniel Coyle, and Leslie Howard. There's our champion. We will meet McLean Ward when we return to Spruce Meadows. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us on a gloriously sunny day at Spruce Meadows. We were treated to the fastest riders in the world. Now you know why he's one of the world's best. McLean Ward of the United States, reigning World Cup champion, lays claim now to the Atco Classic. A terrific day in the Alberta sunshine. Tell us about this mare you've brought to Spruce Meadows and why she's able to beat some of the fastest horses in the world with such little experience. Well, Tina doesn't have a lot of experience, but she has a great quality and a, and a big heart and uh, very proud of her and very happy for her owner, Susie Heller. Uh, is actually my godmother, so it's a great day for our team. It is a great day, and she uh, showed her stablemate, uh, Double H Carlos, that he's got a new competitor right down, the, right down the stable block from her. I told him he needs to step it up next week. <laughs> it was a terrific effort. Over 60 horse rider combinations came through the clock tower today. McLean, what was the trick to this Canada Speed Series first event? I, I think it really came down to the to the turns. You, you know, you needed to get a great turn after the Atco fence, uh, and it's an interesting fence with those standards, uh, and a good turn back on that double combination at the end where a lot of the horses were starting to fatigue, and, and you saw that coming home. Well, a man who's very proud of those Atco signature standards, standing right beside me here, the President and Chief Operating Officer of Atco Structures and Logistics, Stephen Lockwood. Welcome back to the Winter Circle at Spruce Meadows. Well, thank you, Ian, and what a beautiful day. I was able to see yesterday and with all that rain and I was wondering how we would fare today but barely a cloud in the sky beautiful turf and you know I did have a question as to how that how the turf really was compared to yesterday after all that rain just to just to get around it didn't seem there were many slips no it's really remarkable you know Spruce Meadows is the best in the world and we know the conditions are going to be perfect and uh, we could use a little less cold weather sometimes on days like yesterday, but it's spectacular and great to see all the fans out on this beautiful sunny day. Well, all the people just need to see your picture warming up beside the Farrier's Forge from yesterday afternoon, McLean, to know that you were going a little red-green on us. But now we're going to move forward with our championship presentation, ladies and gentlemen. Stephen McLean, please step forward and hoist this piece of championship hardware for over 40 seasons, part of the Spruce Meadows story. The Atco Classic goes to McLean Ward of the United States.
integrity, caring, agility, collaboration. Every day, our people go to work delivering inspired solutions in structures and logistics, electricity, natural gas, retail energy, and ports and transportation to homes, businesses, and communities around the world. Find out more at atco.com. It's time for ooey gooey, melt in your mouth, lip smacking, soul affirming, lovely, special, smooth, delicious chocolates. Only from Purdy's Chocolatier. This year, Spruce Meadows is proud to bring you our 45th anniversary edition of Name the Foal, presented by TELUS. We have some exciting updates for this year's contest, including four foals, a change in naming rules, an extended entry period, and a cash prize with unique keepsake. Follow the foals all summer through our official social media channels as they grow and develop, and we look forward to seeing the names. Visit namethefoal.sprucemeadows.com for more information and to submit your entries. Meet foal number one. Born April 12th, 2020, this little colt was the first Spruce Meadows foal of the year. Not one to shy away, he's figured out that people give the best neck scratches. While he was born dark in color, his dad, Spruce Meadow Stallion Doremi, is gray, and this little guy will likely take on that color as he gets older. Full number one's name will have to start with the letter W. Inspired by the original Spruce Meadow Stallion, Wodka, or Young Wolfsburg as he was known at Spruce Meadows, this beautiful Hanoverian stallion helped to introduce the breed to Canada. He was part of the foundation of what is now the Spruce Meadows Breeding Program. Meet foal number two. Born April 24, 2020, the second foal of the year is also a colt and has the same sire as foal number one. Unlike his sibling, he's a little more timid and prefers to stay closer to mom. Mom is Spruce Meadows mare Skyline, who always produces great-looking foals. This is her fourth baby. Foal number two's name will need to start with the letter A, inspired by Spruce Meadows riding master, Albert Cly. Albert's passion for horses brought him to Canada as a young man. He never intended to settle down in Canada, but Spruce Meadows co-founder Ron Southern convinced him. Albert brought with him knowledge and skills that would be passed on to all of his students and help create what is now the Spruce Meadows Horse Program. He was responsible for the development of many national team horses and riders. Meet full number three a real Mother's Day gift who was born on May 10th, 2020. She's the first filly out of all the foals this year and is easily recognizable with her big white blaze that mimics the markings of her father, Spruce Meadow Stallion Spot Cash. Foal number three will need to have a name that starts with the letter S. Keeping with tradition of past years, her father is Spruce Meadow's Hanoverian Stallion Spot Cash and we want her name to be inspired by Spruce Meadows and the Southern family. Spruce Meadows was the dream of the Southerns to bring an unlikely sport to an unlikely place, giving young Canadian riders a chance to successfully compete against the world's best. Since the inception of Spruce Meadows, Canadian riders have gone on to become some of the best in the world. Meet foal number four. This year, Spruce Meadows welcomed a fourth foal to the family at the beginning of the Victoria Day Long Weekend on May 16, 2020. 
She is a beautiful big girl with bright eyes and a sweet personality. Her father is Do Re Mi, and her mother is the lovely Kate H. Full number four is a bonus entry for Name the Full presented by TELUS. Her name will need to start with the letter M, inspired by Spruce Meadows co-founder, Mark Southern. Mrs. Southern has had unmatched influence and passion shaping Spruce Meadows into what it is today. Her motto, the coffee pot is always on, brings a warm feeling to Spruce Meadows and guests always feel like family. Visit namethefull.sprucemeadows.com for more information and to submit your entries. We are super excited to carry TK Equestrian. TK Equestrian is designed locally here in Calgary and we just started carrying their brand last year. Rima is wearing the Kennedy long sleeve which is paired with the Amelia collarless vest. The Kennedy is UV protection, it's very breathable, moisture wicking, it has four way stretch and thumb holes. Perfect for a workout, riding your horse or just going to the mall. Beside Rima is our contrast sweater. We have three different colors in this and it comes in size small to extra large. On the far mannequin is the TKQ packable down vest and another color of the Kennedy long sleeve. The Kennedy long sleeve comes in the pink that Rima is wearing, the midnight blue on the mannequin and also a camo gray. The vests also come in a huge range of sizes and colors. New for spring 2020 TK Equestrian is the spicy leopard sweater that Morgan's wearing. It comes in the snow leopard and also the Desert Leopard, which is a bit more of a tan color. Wide range of sizes, two colors as I've mentioned. It has a V-neckline, anti-pilling technology, and a bit of a classic boyfriend relax cut to it. Also new to the 2020 summer release is the Starstruck sweater on the right. You can get this in the beautiful blush color or a bit more of a nude color. Again, wide range of sizes. Um, looks great out on the town, pairs really well with a show shirt. And then on the left is the Taylor short sleeve. Now this shirt comes in three different colors that we carry and it comes in long sleeve and short sleeve as you see. It's great for riding, it's very breathable. Body contouring, sweat wicking, feels like a second skin. Great for going for a run or just a, a ride on your horse. Morgan is wearing the TK Equestrian Athletic Sweatshirt. TKEQ has exclusively made the Hunter Green Sweatshirt just for the Spruce Meadows shop. It's so soft inside, great for a crisp show morning, uh, a run, 
or going out for dinner with your friends. Next to Morgan is the Mia Mesh Technical Tea. It's easy to fall in love with the buttery soft feel of the Mia Technical Mesh Top. The elegance seems to create a structured design and mesh detail keeps you cool, making this top truly irresistible. And next to that, we've got our Starlet Sweater. The Starlet Sweater comes in a dark gray and the light gray shown here. It pairs so well with a show shirt or just all on its own. to the smallest detail, getting to the destination the most efficient way possible, ensuring all individual elements are working together to drive high performance, and making sure you do it consistently. Being the best comes down to perfect execution. That's not just good show jumping. That's good railroading. We love a sport that rewards precision. Spruce Meadows first introduced derby competition in the 1980s in the tradition of the great European derbies. So what makes a derby course different is it features all of the natural obstacles. Banks, devil's dikes, ditches, road jumps, lots of water, and a long, long track over a kilometer of length. It takes a special horse. And in the early years, there were so many special horses. Think about this today. Horses that would jump the Grand Prix on Saturday and the Derby on Sunday. Not only would they do it, sometimes they'd win it. I'm speaking, of course, of the legendary Big Ben with Ian Miller. The foothills of the Rockies, just a short distance from downtown Calgary, Alberta. And we're at Spruce Meadows this afternoon where we will bring you the 1991 $100,000 Shell Cup Derby. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Alec Robertson, along with Nancy Southern. And Nancy, what's this derby all about? Well, there's twice as many jumps, it's twice as long, and there's twice as much money as the traditional Grand Prix competition. Riders and horses alike will have to be in peak form in order to finish this course. There's a test of stamina and some massive obstacles to be negotiated. And again, what about the favorites as far as this afternoon's competition is concerned? Big Ben is a great derby horse, Ian Miller. He's always the favorite whenever he enters the ring. He's just a wonderful competitor. Uh, last year's winner is here, and he'll, he'll be trying to defend his title, Voila T, with Mark Laskin. He was the only one to jump a clean round. He actually had time faults last year, but he was the clear-cut winner. Well, one of the most demanding events in show jumping. Also with us this afternoon is part of our broadcast crew, Ian Allison. I'm standing 28 feet above the international ring site of today's Shell Cup atop the Spruce Meadows Bank. This is a great view of the course for today's competition, as long as you don't plan galloping down it on a 1,400 pound show jumper. It's even tough walking down this nearly vertical Spruce Meadows Bank. Once gravity has taken you to the bottom of the Spruce Meadows Bank, the sledding gets really tough. You have only a split second to set up for a massive red and white oxer, then it's on to the infamous Devil's Dyke. The dike poses an extraordinary test in that the horses enter it jumping downhill. Then it's over the always tough water with rails over it, and as they exit, it's an uphill jump over a light rail almost six feet high. It's a test of courage for both horse and rider. I suspect we'll see 50% of our entries today be taken victim in the Devil's Dike. On course now in this $100,000 Shell Cup is Jay Hayes aboard Monterey. Well, Monterey is now residing in uh, Schaumburg, Ontario with Jay, but he actually originated out of uh, the Calgary area. John Anderson used to compete with this horse in the preliminary division. I think this might be too much of a course for Monterey 
at this stage in his career. He's carrying eight jumping faults, having just jumped the first combination, 3AB. Jay was first named to the Canadian equestrian team back in 1985. And again, as you mentioned, this horse may be facing a task that will be too tough for him. He's a little over his head in this game today. Would Jay Hayes know that going into this? I think he would have to know that. I think one of the problems is that uh, the owners don't necessarily know it. You know, the, the people that own these horses sometimes want to see them doing things that the horse isn't quite ready for. And uh, even though the rider can tell them that, they still want to give it a try. So after two refusals, he's over that one hazard, but again, another refusal. At the road jump, and Jay Hayes with Monterey is eliminated. One of the difficult parts of the Shell Cup is the natural fences, such as the road jump, that Monterey had a good look at here and decided he wanted no part of it. Jay did a good job of getting on him over the first element of the road jump, but unfortunately was eliminated at the second element. A demanding challenge here in the $100,000 Shell Cup Derby. And for a look at what we're up against today, we see Mark Laskin aboard Derby Castle. Well, the Shell Cup Derby is a long, long track, as we mentioned. 900 meters and 23 obstacles to be negotiated. Every fence on the course is a test for both horse and rider. We're at jump number four. That was a Liverpool, and Derby Castle is carrying a rail down from the first combination. There's the road jump. There's three gallop strides once you get on top of the table there. A big sweeping right-hand turn to a wide oxer, that balustrade. Another look at the road jump, sideways this time. One step off the road jump. Fatigue will play a factor when? We're hitting the halfway point on the course right now. And this is where the stamina and the fitness of both horse and rider is start to, going to start to come into play. The dry ditch has a knockdown there. Shell cup, five feet five foot three high vertical here's the bank now there's an oxer going up a hill you gallop up to the top of the bank then you have to slow the horse down keeping him quiet so that he doesn't gallop off the end and end up on his nose jump off the bottom and then really rev the motor up to get over this wide oxer set the horse up here's the devil's dyke oh and laskin wipes it out one of the most challenging parts of the course, the Devil's Dyke, and Derby Castle with a refusal. Now the trick here is once you land off the bank, you have to get the horse balanced and his motor going so that you get a good gallop to the oxer. But once you hit the oxer, then you have to set him up, steady him, and encouraging you need a bold horse. You, you can't just go flying into the Devil's Dyke because if you have a horse that's a little worried, like Derby Castle was, he slams on the brakes. They look down at the water at the bottom of the dike. Mark does an excellent job of getting him through it. And here's an interesting water jump. No brush in front. They just have to leave the ground and clear that broad jump. Now the test is to get the horse back for another five foot three high vertical. So we've gone to a broad jump and then a high jump. Another high jump here. These horses are extremely tired at this point as we head to the double liver pools. Water underneath each of them. Derby Castle and Mark Laskin. 15 jumping faults, but we've got a lot of time faults because of the refusal. So Mark Laskin aboard Derby Castle Coming down to the Devil's Dyke, Mark's riding the horse extremely aggressively. He asked the horse to take off far too soon. The horse isn't very bold, and so it skids to a stop. 
he gets regrouped and makes it through, but ends up with 20 and a half faults. Let's go down to Ian Allison. Although the Shell Cup course is supposed to stay the same each year, it can get bigger, and the riders have been coming out of the ring mentioning that the fences seem bigger than in previous years, particularly in the early portion of the course, but for the early oxers to take their tolls where in previous years they might not have. Well, that's certainly the case for this one. They had the first fence down. Hap Hansen from California with Wizard. One of the most successful Grand Prix riders to come from the West Coast. Hap's the first rider to make it through the double oxers, but he knocked the first fence down with this little stallion. He's carrying four faults. The best score with five riders having gone now is 20 faults on the Shell Cup Derby. Do you think we'll see it clear today? I would venture to say we will. From? <laughs> From. That's, That's the big, big question. question. The dry ditch coming down. Hap Hansen and Wizard are carrying eight faults as they approach the bank. Wizard, 16-2, 10 years of age. And a stallion. We're, it's not often you see stallions in uh, competition. They're a little more difficult to ride because sometimes they have their mind on other things. <laughs> Hap's got this whole line figured out very well. Has the rail coming in, but handled it as well as anyone. With five fences left to go, Hap Hansen is taking over the lead, just 12 jumping faults so far. Does he have to worry about the clock? Yeah, he's going to have some time faults, and he's got another rail, so he's carrying 16. 135 seconds to get through the finish. And he does it. Just does it, but he does have 16 jumping faults. Hap Hansen aboard Wizard. Looked to me like Hap, Hap had it all figured out, but he got a little bit close. The horse jumped ahead of itself over its shoulder, recovered nicely for the second and third element. And Hap Hansen with 16 faults moves into the lead at this point in the Shell Cup Derby. Mark, you've had one trip around with Derby Castle. Uh, How did it stack up to last year? I think, Ian, it's um, more difficult this year. Fences are bigger? Yeah, in certain places, and uh, especially finishing up with the, uh, I believe, the 22nd and 23rd efforts being uh, the big oxer combination over the Liverpools makes it doubly hard. From Calabasas, California, we have Candace Schlamm aboard Wula. $100,000 Shell Cup Derby, $33,000 going to the first place finisher. A great start here. A great start for Candace Schlamm and Hula. She hasn't had a good week here at the Spruce Meadows National Tournament. I guess she's been saving it all up for the $33,000 first place prize money in the Shell Cup. No fault so far, heading down to jump number six. Candace actually began riding Western horses at the age of three. You know, the strategy that this rider has uh, going into the Shell Cup is that she saved the horse all week. She had two classes or two competitions with her, catches a rail there. But maybe what she's done is she's conserved a lot of energy, and maybe this horse is fresh enough to complete this course with the least number of faults. Bula is 11 years old. Would that be a factor? Is there a certain age where maybe you Definitely are? Definitely in her prime. Okay. The show jumpers are in their prime between 10 and 12. Very slow coming down the bank. That'll She'll have to make up some uh, time galloping on. Getting organized for this wide oxer now. And setting up for the Devil's Dyke. Again, a little, didn't get her back quite enough. 
gets out fine. She's carrying eight bolts with five fences left. Three jumps to go. Hula and Candice Schlamm just eight jumping faults. I don't think there's a concern with the clock. No, it looks like she's got plenty of time to jump the double liver pools. Rattled them, but they all stand up at the end. And Candice Schlamm and Hula move into the lead. First fence down for Hula and Candice Schlamm, I don't believe they thought would be a problem, but it looks like the mare just peeked down at the bottom of the ditch, forgetting about her hind end and not knowing where the last or where the rail was pulling it down. Just keep her going, Candace. That's a heck of a workout for a Sunday afternoon. Sure is. Uh, I scratched from my horses in the morning just to keep my energy for this. It's pretty tough out there. You think it was wise to save her for Sunday? Definitely, definitely. Um, I think it was the best choice I could have made. We'll get your breath. Thank you. What can we say about this next competitor? Ian Miller from Perth, Ontario, aboard Big Ben. Let's have a good look at the course today. Jump number one, a relatively easy fence, flower boxes, inviting the horses to get going on the course. Miller's taken a tight turn to conserve time over jump number two, very narrow, high vertical, onto the double oxers, 3AB, handling it easily. A left-hand turn for Ben and Miller to the Liverpool, jump number four, and then a left-hand turn to the first part of the road jump. Jump up, one, two, three gallop strides off, and then a wide sweeping turn to the right over the balustrade oxer. Five foot three on the back rail, six feet wide. Another look at the road bank from another angle. Jump number seven, one stride and off. One of the fences that has been catching a lot of the horses is the next fence, number eight, a dry ditch. It's very deep and the horses tend to look down into the ditch. Ben handles it easily. We're halfway around the course and the horses and riders are starting to get tired as they hit jump number nine, a five foot three high vertical. Jump number 10 is an oxer going uphill to get the horses to the top of the bank. We'll watch the rider slow the horse down. 26 foot vertical drop. Ben just gallops down, very well balanced, and gallop on to a wide oxer you could drive a small car through, and then the Devil's Dyke handles it perfectly. <laughs> through the Devil's Dyke, no faults at all. Miller is taking the lead with five jumps left. An unusual water, no brush box. You just have to take a big broad jump get the horse back, and set him up for a high jump. Right hand turn and three fences left on the course. Miller's carrying no fault with Big Ben. Another high jump. Jump number 16, and here's the last set of fences. Double Liverpool, 17 AB. Big wide oxers over water. And Miller does it. Our first clear round, he had three hundredths of a second to make it in within the time allowed. What a thrilling experience for the thousands on hand here at Spruce Meadows this afternoon. Ian Miller aboard Big Ben, a clear round in this $100,000 Shell Cup Derby. Ian, does it get any better than that? He's quite a horse, I gotta tell you. The best, wonderful. You shaved a little close on the time. Well, no, I knew where I was. <laughs> any trouble spots out there? The whole thing is tough enough. It's kind of a, the straw that breaks the camel's back effect. It's just a little everywhere. Well done. Thanks. And I took some food too. The oldest competitor of this championship from California, Ronnie Freeman.
aboard Starlet. And for Starlet, this is his first big appearance in such a major competition. Lucky rep there at jump number two for Starlet. Fence down at 3A. Four faults. Now this combination, I think this is where age is going to play a real factor here. I, I'm not sure that Ronnie is going to have enough strength to keep going all the way around this track. For sure, the sport of show jumping requires maturity on the rider's part. They need to have experience. They need to really get their nerves down and develop their horses. But once you get to be Ronnie's age, at 48 years of age, some of your reflexes, your timing's gone. And I'm not sure that Ronnie's in the same kind of peak fitness as, say, an Ian Miller and Big Ben. Doing well so far, though, but only four faults. And the big test is yet to come. Certainly. Charlotte's jumping beautifully, though. Will a horse run down this obstacle? Sometimes they will run down. Sometimes a horse will look at the bottom, and you can see Ronnie's taking a sideways approach, so he can get a nice approach to the oxer. I'm not sure that that's the way I would ride it, but whatever works for you. Here's the Devil's Dyke now. My goodness, this horse is leaping today. He's surprising everyone, but will he have to? Be concerned about the clock. He'll definitely have to be concerned about the clock. He's got four fences left to jump. And he is going to have some time faults, but I think Ronnie will take that. I think he's surprising even himself with his score, just carrying four faults now. This horse made a double effort at jump number 16, kind of slinked over it, but there's the time allowed. Now he's starting to incur time faults. And also has a rail at the Liverpool. Eight jumping faults plus one and a half time faults. Ronnie Freeman aboard Starlet. He's tired. Ronnie Freeman using everything he's got to get through the double Liverpools. Starlet touches the back rail of the first one. It comes down. And a few time faults, but a good score. Right now they're sitting in third place. Current leader, Big Ben with Ian Miller. The only clear round of the day so far. Albert Clive from Calgary, Alberta. Aboard Picnic. Albert's originally from West Germany. Immigrated to Canada in the early 70s. Albert came to Canada and he didn't speak a word of English. And uh, he's been the riding master at Spruce Meadows since its inception. And I can tell you what, Alec, I certainly wouldn't want to be riding picnic around the Shell Cup Derby today. This is a tough horse. Tell us a little bit about uh, nine-year-old picnic, 16-2. Hanoverian Gelding, he's a, a very careful jumper, but he's quite unorthodox. If you watch uh, the typical horses, they have a nice round bas excuse me, bascule over the jumps, and they tuck their front legs right up against their chest. What's a bascule? The bascule is the arc over the jump. When, when you see Picnic jump, he has more of a stag leap. It's sort of out and up and then straight down. The traditional jumper leaves the ground, makes a nice bend around the jump. So what you're saying is there's maybe not a chance of this horse ever going flat. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Okay. You see, he just leaps up in the air, he kicked out there. He's carrying eight jumping faults so far. Second rail down, eight jumping faults. But he's a happy horse. Look at his, his ears, even though he knocked that one down. His ears are always forward and he loves doing his job for Albert. Very cautious and tentative coming down the bank. Let him walk, lands down the walk. <laughs> ah, catching two rails 
in the Devil's Dyke. Now Albert and Picnic have 20 faults. But can you believe this horse? He's still got his ears forward. Lots of horses get mad and attack the jumps. Just a happy face. Oh, Albert made a little riding error. He knew it was his fault, so he stops and pats his horse. What actually happened there? Right? Albert decided he wanted to take an extra stride, so he checks on the reins, pulled him back, but Picnic came back too much, and that put them right off the takeoff point. Now, did he still make the extra stride on the second attempt? Then, then he got a rhythm going, and he was much had a much better stride to the set on the second attempt. It was obviously way out as far as the, the time situation is concerned. A rough afternoon for Albert Pye aboard Picnic. Well, watch Picnic now. This is the unorthodox style. He jumps way up in the air. As you see, his back gets a little inverted, and he lands way on the other side of the jump. That's sort of a stag leap, and that's not the common way of jumping a jump. Off to a good start now is Francie Steinwedell aboard Quivian. Well, you just jinxed her jinxed there, her. Alec. Yeah. Having the second fence down, this is just a little horse, a little French horse, I believe. And uh, normally you'd like to have a, a bigger galloping horse for this type of competition because this horse is going to take twice as many steps as Big Ben. Right up there on the table, he had to take four gallop steps when Big Ben only took three. So it's going to take a lot more energy for Quivian to get around this course. Carrying four faults right now. These riders are just drenched with sweat and perspiration when they come off this Shell Cup Derby course. Kibion and Francie Steinwedel on course now. And Francie says that actually his strength is consistency. 12 faults. We consistently have the last two jumps down. <laughs> Here's the here's the big bank carrying 16. You know the uh, American horses really don't get a chance to see European type courses like we have here at Spruce Meadows. And you start hitting these natural obstacles and you start running into trouble. When well, I will see how Francie and Kivion handle the Devil's Dyke, and they don't. This horse has probably never seen a Devil's Dyke before. Second refusal of the Devil's Dyke. So now she's got nine faults just for the refusal. A lot of the American riders, after they've been to Spruce Meadows once, they go home and they dig their own dike to practice over and train over. Disqualification for Francie Steinbordel and Kivian. Schoberg, Ontario, aboard Monopoly. That was one of the most successful riders in the amateur owner jumper division on the Ontario circuit. That was several years ago. Of course, she graduated to the Grand Prix level. Beth had a bit of a scare. Monopoly really misjudged how wide the second oxer was in 3AB. Swam through it a little, so she's carrying four faults up onto the road jump. really affect the psyche of a horse early on in the course when you've got so many wide oxers left to jump but now what the best job is is to be as accurate as possible in the takeoff point and make sure that Monopoly gains his confidence back what about the horses uh, do they dislike an event such as this do they dislike jumping do they dislike this challenge no Alec these horses love what they're doing. If they didn't like it, and we've seen it, they stop. And there's nothing on earth that can make the, a horse do something he doesn't want to do. He might, as, he might as well be an elephant when they decide to stop because there's no rider strong enough. So he's not being forced? 
no, he's not being forced. They like what they do. They trust their rider. In fact, that's 80% of it when you get to this level of competition. It's trust between horse and rider. And this, Beth Underhill and Monopoly are having a fabulous round going for them. Just the four faults early on in the course. They could move into second place if they can hang on. Ian Miller, the only one to turn in a clear round, but Monopoly and Beth Underhill have an opportunity right here to move into second place in the Shell Cup Derby. Four faults, but what about the clock? It's gonna be tight. She's gonna have to hustle to the finish, but I think she's got it. Beth Underhill aboard Monopoly with only four faults in a time of 1.31.75 will move into second place behind Ian Miller and Big Ben. Beth's awfully happy with that. She did a great job of recovering the horse after he had the problem here at 3AB. Jumps the first one fine, takes a gallop stride, but then misjudges the back rail and starts swimming through the oxer for the four faults. But what a recovery. Now we have Jonathan Asselin aboard Attaché. And of course, uh, Jonathan and Attaché owned, uh, Attaché owned by Attaché Stables. And it's uh, Jonathan Asselin and our own Nancy Southern who own Attaché Stables. And I'm actually, I have to tell you, I'm just as nervous when Jonathan goes as I am when Linda goes. Carrying uh, no fault so far to jump number six. What do you expect from Attaché? $33,000 for first place, Alec. <laughs> but he's got an awful job ahead of him. He's got the most difficult part of the course coming up. Big Ben, the only clear round in the Shell Cup Derby so far. This horse has a beautiful galloping stride. Watch his front feet. He just paws the ground and eats it up. A rub there, so maybe with fatigue becoming a factor later. I would think that fatigue is going to be a factor also. Jonathan has had quite a serious back injury and hasn't been quite up to snuff himself. Look at Natasha sliding down the bank there. Here's the tough test. And he oh, has the rail in the devil's dive. Four faults. Now to break the ties for other than first place, they will go to the time it takes to get around the course. So now Jonathan has got four faults. Beth Underhill with Monopoly had four faults. So the fastest time will move the horse into second place. However, Eight Tasha faults. A very good round, and under the time allowed, eight jumping faults. One. Coming into the Devil's Dyke, it looked like Jonathan and Attaché were home free. Look at the horse pick up his front knees. He's very confident. However, maybe a shade of fatigue coming out. Maybe being a little bit tired, catching the C element of the Devil's Dyke, and then a little bit too strong a ride, a little too fast going to the high jump there. Jump number 16. He must be very happy. Really, very pleased. Thanks, Ian. How'd your back hold up out there? Feels great. He jumped great. Everything's fine. Problems coming out of the dike. What happened? Just get a little bold? I may have grabbed a little hard, I think. I may have grabbed him a little hard. He jumped in so bold. May have had a little bit too much going in. We'll let you get him moving. Thank you. Next on course at this $100,000 Shell Cup Derby, Rich Fellers from Wilsonville, Oregon, near Portland. El Mirasol. This horse came from the Hunter competitions, Alec. Um, he showed Open Hunter, which is judged on style and, and the, the beautiful way the horse goes and jumps and jumps. But the jumps are only three foot six to four feet high. All of a sudden, Rich decides to start this horse in the jumper competitions, and what happens? The horse still jumps in beautiful form. 
but you put the fences up to five and a half feet and he can jump them just as easy as four. Now Rich was the surprise second place finisher in this event last year. He's the re he was the real underdog because he's had a lot of problems with some of his horses on the natural obstacles. But El Marisol, like a true hunter, attacked the ditches and the dike and the bank. He finished second again in the $90,000 Chrysler Classic Derby at the Spruce Meadows Invitational. And then one month later, he was runner-up. Winner, that is. He won. He was the winner of the Grand Prix of Seattle. He's just had a wonderful career, and who would have ever thought pick a hunter out of the show ring that does a pretty little figure eight type of competition and bring him into an aggressive demanding competition like the Shell Cup Derby. He's carrying four faults right now though. Put that analogy in, in perspective um, in terms of uh, what they're trying to accomplish here. Well, let me see. It would be like um, you and I on the track team in junior high going up against <laughs> Ben Johnson, I guess. That's exactly what it would be like. And uh, But this horse... But maybe today you and I could go up against Ben Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> but this horse has come up and just surprised everybody. Eight faults so far. And a great time, a fast time of 121. And that moves Rich Fellers and Almirasol right now into third place. Jump number nine is the first fence that El Mirasol had down, and look at how far away he leaves for the jump, flattening out over the top, but the horse has a beautiful style of jumping. We go to number 204. From Calabasas, California, aboard Pegasus, we have Candace Schlom. Pegasus, 17 hands, 13 years old. One rail down. This horse is not quite as big as Big Ben, but he's a tall horse. Big Ben is one of those horses that is so muscular. When we talk about hands, each hand is four inches, and they measure the horse from the floor to the top of his shoulder. So 16 hands is five feet at the shoulder. This horse is five foot four at the shoulder. Big Ben, he has got to be about five foot six at the shoulder, even maybe even a little bit more. And then he's got this huge neck that sticks up on him. The way it's put on his body, he goes on like a giraffe. How important is the size of the horse in this endurance test? The bigger the horse, the easier it is to eat up the ground. He only has to take one step for every 18 feet, where a small horse may have to take two steps in 20 feet. Um, the most important factor in this course, though, is the heart of the horse. 12 jumping falls for Candace Schlom and Pegasus. And when I talk about heart, I don't talk, I'm not meaning the aerobic type of heart. I'm talking about the will to jump the jumps and the will to win. Almost through the Devil's Dyke, but not quite. 16 jumping faults so far for Candace Schlom and Pegasus. She could finish in the top eight or so. Time doesn't seem to be a factor. Oh, and another, another rail. down. That really shoots down her chances. And after careers as a stockbroker, radio broadcaster, and a hotel and restaurant owner operator, Ian Miller has finally found his calling. This afternoon, he's a Ford Czar. Well, Ian Miller's already got it made in the shade in the Shell Cup Derby. He's the only rider with Big Ben to have gone around clear. Wouldn't it be nice to have first and second place in the Shell Cup Derby? $100,000 of total prize money. First place is $33,000. This horse, Alec, I just love this horse. He's, he's the Joe Namath of the show jumping world. 
He's tough. He doesn't mind a bit of pain. He's got hawks like Joe Namath's bees, lumps and bumps, and he's always in there trying to do his best. Just knocked down his first rail, four faults. Little wide going going down. Yeah, but Ian is a, he really understands this horse and he's been around the course already, so he took the, the option to have a little more time and it paid off for him. He wrote that exquisitely well. So he's actually looking for a second place finish with this horse and he can do it, I'm assuming, depending on the time situation. Uh, Beth Underhill with Monopoly had four faults and a time of 131.75. So if Czar is quicker than that. No, he's not going to be faster, but he is going to move himself into third place. One. The Shell Cup panel is a huge vertical. Czar leaves a little bit too early. You see, when the horses jump too far away from the jump, they get flat over the top, they don't have the height, and they pull the rail down. One small mistake. But Ian Miller occupies first place with Big Ben. Now he occupies third place with Czar. Ian, a late rub at the vertical with the back legs. No jump off with yourself. No jump off with my side, and that would have been too much to hope for. There's room for the needy, but not for the greedy. He gave you a big effort. He gave me a tremendous effort. I'm very proud of him. Thank you. Go catch your breath. Thanks. But it's a truly wonderful jumping horse. He's got power and he's got a great mind, a great attitude. He's very rideable. See the way he cleared that oxer there. What about the horse's vision as he goes over a jump? Does he see it all the way or does he lose sight at any particular time? Yes, the horses actually have binocular vision. So once they get right to the front of the jump, they don't see it and they trust, have to rely completely on the rider to get them to the right takeoff point and tell them to leave the ground. Four faults for Hendricks right now in the Devil's Dyke, and that's where it caught up. His youth caught up with him there. Still a fine round for Hendricks and Hap Hansen. Very smooth. Nothing drastic about the way Hap rides this horse. His hands are smooth. The leg is always on the horse. And just a fabulous round. And it's good enough to move Hap Hansen into second place. Now we have Linda Southern Hathcock with Fly Canadian. Your younger sister? Knocking the first fence down. Again, another young horse, just eight years of age and uh, inexperience, a big factor. Linda spent some time in Europe this past winter. Obviously, that's going to help her. The more mileage, the more times you can get into a competition situation, the better off as a rider you are. The thing you don't want to do is use up your horse too much. You want to peak your horse for certain competitions in the year. Eight faults for so far, eight faults for Fly Canadian. Beautiful weather conditions here this afternoon at Spruce Meadows. Thousands of fans on hand enjoying a great competition. The official count was 32,000 people here for the Shell Cup. One of the finest horse jumping facilities in the entire world, Spruce Meadows. And we're watching Fly Canadian, Linda Hefcott, come down the bank. She's carrying eight jumping faults, and she's going to have an awful lot of time faults. Horse almost stopped in the middle of the bank, almost sat right down. Was he afraid? 
I don't think, I just think he didn't know what he was supposed to do. Oh. And the first part of the Devil's Night comes down, so she's carrying 12 and she's going to have a problem with the time. Four fences left. Three jumps left now, sorry. And another rail, and this horse is looking tired. The way he jumped, jump number 16. And there will be time balls for Linda. Just not fly Canadian at Linda Southern's day. He's still a Canadian, but now resides in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Here we have Mark Laskin aboard Wallati, the defending champion. Well, Mark Laskin took home the first place ribbon and a lot of dough last year in the Shell Cup Derby. And it's not gonna happen for Mark today. Four faults already at 3B. What happened? Just I think he was very surprised. When he got into the combination, he was a long ways away from the second element and the horse didn't take it. A, a, strong enough stride to jump up over it. So now he's trying to regroup and of course finish strong. Well, if he can, he can move into second place, and wouldn't that be something? Uh, he'd have to beat Hap Hansen and Hendrick's time of 127.78. Oh, that's disappointing for Mark and Boilati. She's a neat little French mare. It's very rare that she has a knockdown. There's Ian Miller biting his nails as Mark Laskin gallops up the wall, up the bank. Mark's already got four faults. And another one came down at the Devil's Dyke. Five. See the guy in the corner? I mean, he was. Ian Miller may be more concerned about finishing in fourth with Czar rather than he must feel pretty relaxed now knowing that he still is the only one with a clear round aboard Big Ben. Oh, he's, he's got to feel good about that. Mark Laskin carrying eight faults. As he heads to the finish line, a good time of 124. He'll be on the leaderboard, Mark Laskin and Wallati, the defending champion. Galloping down now to the 3AB combination, Mark should have actually waited and taken an extra stride, jumps in and he's too far away. The horse is surprised, starts swimming to try and get across the back rail. We've seen that happen many times here in the Shell Cup Derby. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the International Ring the 1991 champion of the Shell Cup, Ian Miller. <laughs> Ian, a tremendous afternoon for you. You couldn't have done it without your mighty partner. You really had the Formula Gold shell in your tanks today. Yeah, and when that uh, tractor trailer heads out of here, uh, it'll it'll be running on shell. <laughs> Ian, joining us as well, I have Mr. Jack McLeod, the Chief Executive Officer of Shell Canada, to present the Shell Cup to you today. Congratulations, Ian. Tremendous event. The crowd favorite comes through here at Spruce Meadows. Big Ben and Ian Miller win the $100,000 Shell Cup Derby. Nancy, just an awesome performance. I think Vince Lombardi, he was speaking about football players, but he captures it all with Big Ben. The spirit, the will to win are the things that endure, and that's Big Ben and Ian Miller. A great finish to an exciting day. That's it for now from Spruce Meadows. <laughs>